Hey, Nate, uh, just want to thank you for joining us. My name's Ben. I'm a success manager with Pro Planner. We've got Mike Wong here as well, who's another success manager. And uh, wanted to thank you for joining us for this call. We wanted to run through what your experience has been so far with Pro Planner. And uh, Nate, if you could, what's your role at Graystar and uh, what projects are you working on? And tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so my role here at Graystar is Director of Construction. Um, I oversee the Arizona region uh, for construction operations. Um, right now we've got, let's see, we got four active deals and about three more, yeah, three more starts this year. So that's multifamily. Um, actually, we got more than that. We've uh, got two industrial deals actually going as well. So that, that covers uh, an industrial sector. Um, multifamily, whether that's student housing, market rate, or active adult. Um, so that's that's kind of what we do here in at Graystar and what what my role is. So. Okay, super cool. Um, speaking of those projects, what is what is your scope there? Are you guys GC? What kind of durations are we looking at? Who's the customer? Stuff like that. Yeah, so we're an owner builder. So our our customer is essentially ourselves uh, and our equity partners. Um, so durations can range anywhere. I got a 30 month deal starting this year, 26 month deal starting this year. I'm sitting on a 27 month deal right now. Um, out here visiting the team this morning. Um, and so we got projects that are, are I think our shortest project is right now is 18 months. So right. the industrial deals are 12 months. So that would actually be the shortest deal. So I would say ranging from 12 to, to 30 at this point from a, a scheduled duration. All right. Awesome. Uh, any other cool construction factors you want to you want to share with us about those projects? Anything that excites you? You know, I, construction in general excites me. I think it's just the uh, the the facets of multifamily. You know, I think uh, a lot of people think it's oh, you're you're building apartments like it's it should be easy, right? We're building boxes, and it should be easier, right? Um, you know, hence outbuild trying to make it easier. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh I think just the technicality of 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 the the projects um and just the amount of communication um that needs to take place and, and the coordination. Um I think that's what's what's really exciting. So yeah, absolutely. I, I fully agree with that. And that kind of leads us into my next question. What are some of the challenges that you find yourself encountering on the projects? Man, uh manpower right now. Manpower and materials, I would say are are uh probably the biggest constraints um, right yeah. now so totally. so when you say manpower you mean skilled skilled workforce yeah skilled workforce uh you know with the the market obviously it's it's cooling in some uh some regions of the country but arizona is just gangbusters still so i think skill, skilled labor getting the right people um shoot i've had we had an electrician on site who would bring on bodies he would find that weren't, they've never pulled wire, been an electrician in their entire life. So it's, it's finding the labor, then to your point, really the skilled labor to, to execute on the project. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, tell us about some of the goals you have for your projects. What are some ideal outcomes for your, your kind of vision for all of your projects? Yeah. I mean, I think it would be on schedule and on budget would be the, <laughs> would be the high level, but um, look, we're going to have, we're going to have problems, right? Every project has its challenges. Um, you know, manpower, like I said, and material, I think the, it's not necessarily the problem. It's how we work through it. Right. So, um, and that's what I, you know, tell the teams is I think a successful project for us and for, for our team in, in general is like, we're, we're going to have problems, but let's work through it. And as long as we're communicating, um, and, and not giving up and throwing our hands in the air, but finding solutions, being proactive, not reactive, that's all we can ask for. Um, and I think that that really that's going to determine the outcome of that project. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, and then what's what's your vision for an efficient job site or an efficient project? Um, I think just communication. Um, you know, uh, it's whether that's that's verbal, I think a lot in, in in email, but I think bringing people to the job site, right? I think in the the COVID era, everybody got so comfortable uh, working behind their computers, right? And and Zoom and Team uh, Teams, but I think the to over communicate, um, I think that's that would be probably the my response to that question. Absolutely, could not agree more. 
Um, what kind of tools are, are you guys using to help over communicate and, and to, to visualize things on your project? Uh, Procore, um, Procore and mainly um, now, obviously outbuild um, and just daily really communicating in, in daily huddles. One of the things we do here is we pull all the foreman together every morning and we have a big, two big boards out on this project specifically, uh, two very big boards that have our phasing plan and, and la like huge laminated sheets of, of the project and a constraints board. And um, we use that visual a lot. Um, again, kind of back to communicating. So I think by Procore, which is, I think it's effective. Uh, it, it, it's effective, but I think what we find, and I think you guys can probably speak to it is all these subcontractors just get Procore emails, right? And then they go to a spam folder. Uh, so I'll, I'll be that Procore is a very good tool. I don't think there's there's any substitute for that in person and having the visuals um, and doing it on a daily basis. So I'd say that 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 is a tool we're using right now uh, very effectively, which is really just in person communicating and um, visuals, really using visuals. Yeah. Yeah. Helping drive engagement, really get some collaboration pieces. Yep. Get people to speak up and like you said, communicate. Right. So daily huddles every day. What about uh, sub trade meetings once a week, like a big sub trade meeting where you do big coordination or? Yeah, we do. Uh, well, the foreman's meeting is is once a week, and that's where everybody really sits down and and goes over the the week and the forecast and, and things of that nature. Um, those daily huddles are are every morning touch bases on on where we're at, what what needs to be done today. So yeah, the we do do weekly coordination uh, meetings, uh, pre con meetings before our subs come on site. Those are pretty standard, but I would say our our weekly coordination and schedule meetings um, are are big key to that as well. And what has been your, you know, think of the height of the project, right? You got as many subs as you're probably going to have in that room at one time. What what has really been your struggles with with just not just engagement, but getting all the bits of information, bits of information you need to effectively commit to a plan and set up that plan that you're checking in with every day? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I hate to, it for it to sound like an excuse, and it always does, but it's it's kind of the industry we're in right now where. And this is what I tell the team is we're, I feel like we're turning the Titanic around because subs are used to on any given project, they show up, either do or don't do the work, and then they go home, right? They're very seldomly are some of these foremen or some of these trade partners really asked to sit in a room and commit to a plan. It's just, it's, it's, it's a different market sector, uh, kind of like how single family homes is a, a, such a different market sector. They're just not used to doing that. So I think one, the engagement is a, is a very, very huge piece to that. And then two, they just don't come prepared because they're not used to having a seat at the table and really having somebody engage with them at that level. Um, say, look, we are going to plan and we're going to plan it with you. We're not just going to send you a schedule and say, get it done. It's like, we have to actively plan the work with you. I would say that's probably the biggest you know, take away from, from not getting the information we want, right? Cause they're just not used to providing that and being involved in that process. So we're not, we're not able to extract that information easily, but it's going to take time, but I think we'll get there. The, the whole joke about poll planning is it's really pulling information out of people instead of actually pulling the schedule and working on the actual milestones and phases. It's, yep. I've been in that room many times where there's a lot of blank <laughs> stares at you. Like, wait, hold on. You're actually asking me of what I think. That's, yeah. that's new. I'm not sure how to respond to that. Exactly. Well, thanks for that, that insight. Yeah. Based off that, sounds like you put a, put a pretty high importance on scheduling and planning. Um, I'm curious what your take is. Where would you rank scheduling and planning when it comes to a successful project? Number one, at, at the number one. I mean, time is money, right? And money is time. So it's, it's, yeah, I would say it's number one. Fully agree with that. Um, now let's take a step away. So you've talked about some of your processes on the job site. You've got whiteboards. You've got constraint logs on there. You've got your daily huddles, your weekly foreman meetings. It sounds like you're approaching these things uh, with a, a really great attitude. Um, I'm curious, you know, to take that a step further, what are some of the main added values you find when taking those concepts and, and utilizing tech on your job site. So what you're asking, what the, what are the benefits I'm seeing from taking that information and using tech instead? Yeah. 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 Any, any bit of software, pro core outbuild. To try to improve any of those processes or just information flow. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I, well, the one thing about outbuild is the, the, 
responsibility tags and being able, what I really like when I just reviewed with the team was the way that we can take the information on a weekly basis and have it extrapolated into a PDF form that has, that looks like kind of Excel. Right. And, it, and it, I think that is, that's huge because what I see with these schedules we print out from, you know, and it's not a knock against like P6 or Astro, they're, they're great softwares for people that use them. Um, but a, a, a guy that just is, is out there working and not used to managing or looking at those schedules, it's gibberish. And it's very hard to like, look at that when you have all these other sub activities and yours is the one weeded in between and between the lines. Um, and it just, that's why I tell guys is like, you'll hand them that piece of paper. That's a schedule date and it's on the floorboard of the truck and they don't even look at it. So I think that, that taking all that information that we're planning and being able to pull it out of, out of, out of the software um, in that form where it's color coded and it's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and their blocks, like it's in Excel. I think it's a very easy tool visually to be able to see for them, right. And for anybody um, where they need to be and what they need to be doing. Um, I, that to me is the best way to, to the information we're doing in the Monday morning huddles and bringing it into the software and the look aheads and be able to extract it that way is, I think is going to be huge. How many of you guys out there have iPads too? That's it's very common. Everybody, I would say that what we're finding is the subcontractor base, like almost no one. I mean, there's very few subs that foreman's that'll have iPads. It's vastly different. Um, it's vastly different than you know where, where I've worked with large union outfits, where those those union uh, subcontractors they all have the tech and the gadgets, right? It's we're just in a different, uh, you know, less sophisticated uh, subcontractor base. I think where they're hard workers and they're great at what they do. There's just not a lot of like tech involvement. Um, but I know for our guys, our superintendents, all of our project managers and all of our project engineers, we have iPads for sure. So yeah. the only point I would mention that too, is, you know, you always have the backup of the PDF that they can, you can post on those boards you already have out there and hand out during those meetings. And then the, that's the exactly what we just talked about actually, is I like, we're literally before this call is like, we need to get, we need to print that out in this massive like sheet and hang it up on the board and, we're finding ways that we're going to be, we're going to be executing on that, but exactly, exactly what you just said. So what's well, full con full content prints. That's one of the um, other things I really like about our software as well is that there's not any software that puts all your schedule on one page for you. And so, and unless you have to do some huge blow up and put in blue beam and adjust it, it's, you know, out of the right. box with us too. just keeps that, that big board as fresh as it needs to be for your, for right. your hobbies. So, yep. Absolutely. Um, now I'd also like to ask, so you've been using outbuild on a couple of your projects. Now I'd love to see how you've been lever leveraging outbuild and how does it fit in your current processes as a, as an owner builder? Yeah, I, I the, the, well, it fits in our current process with how, you know, we do weekly schedule updates on every project, right? There's, um, you know, some companies and some outfits where they'll do it once a month or bi-weekly. I find that weekly updates you can you drive the best results, right? If if it, if it goes too long, then it's you're kind of putting a fudge factor on some dates, right? Um, so I think it it fits extremely well in with the look ahead and then breaking it down to the weekly planner. I think that's it, it echoes kind of the process we already we want to do. Um, it, it helps us get there. Um, so I think that's that's been huge. Absolutely, and and that kind of mending into our our process we've already been you know working to establish on weekly updates. Right. You guys were using like Excel and, and other PDF documents and things like that to try to set up that, that workflow or. Well, we've just been using, we've been using ask to power projects and just updating that, updating that on a weekly basis. Yeah. And then if we, you know, break out schedules, production rate um, reports, we've been doing Excel files. So kind of taking the information and putting it into another format um, that helps other people read it easier. So essentially. Yeah. Gotcha. And has Outbuild been able to make that a little bit easier or remove some of those processes because it's baked into Outbuild? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, again, I think it 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 takes what we were trying to achieve and like helps us achieve that with the weekly updates um, and the look ahead. And you know, the one the other the other part of that process was it's really helped us trim our schedules down where we would have you know two thousand activity schedules or whatever. It's really helped us trim that down. Um, from a master schedule standpoint, um, to really be able to, if we needed to make some changes to sequence on a project, it's not like this massive string. It's it's now more compartmentalized to be able to 
massage or manipulate the schedule as we see fit or as we need to um, from a, the master schedule standpoint. So. Absolutely. That makes sense. Um, and then are you leveraging any data, any analytics? It, it sounds like, you know, you've been tracking some things in Excel uh, with Outbuild. We've got that weekly work plan. We track some uh, some data points like PPC, reasons for variance. Are you, are you utilizing any of those tools right now? So we're, we're pretty young on the three projects that we're using this, um, and we are already. Yeah. Staying, we're already getting use out of that. Um, the plan percent complete. Um, I do like the S curve. That's been something I can geek out over. Uh, so I, I do like the, I'm really excited to see the analytics come to life as the project really gets into the meat and potatoes, but we have been utilizing that in the early stages as, as, as we've been able to. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that kind of speaks to data, right? You use it consistently. And then at the end of the project, now you've got all of the information or kind of a, a help check on your project. Right. Perfect. The, the one thing too, I know from projects that I've been on, it was the worst thing to hear a team say, oh yeah, we, we did that on the, we made that mistake on the last project, right? Or, you know, and you hear it on every job and you're like, why do I keep hearing this? And I know that um, having a retrospective, having a reasons for variance really, you know, I commend you guys for doing this every week of really looking back and updating every week. That's how you get better. That's how you, you consistently check what do we plan right? What did we plan wrong? What can we take as a lessons learned and apply it to the next week and get better and better and better? Exactly. Of, the, the monthly updates, even the, you know, every two months, right? You're, you're driving the car, looking in the rear view mirror, right? You're not, not learning from your mistakes fast enough. So you're still making mistakes. Exactly. hundred percent. And then on some of your previous projects, what has been your risk strategy? Risk strategy, I guess we could break that question down a little bit. I could, I could go into a whole gamut of things. What's like, uh, you know, delays, damages, avoiding claims, um, any of those items. Yeah, I, I think risk from a risk management perspective, it's it, you know, again, documentation I think is huge, but um, for it, the just being proactive, right? Um, you know, if there's a problem, raise your hand. Right. Um, I think that's, I think that's the culture and the environment we just kind of, we've set as a, as a company and region um, from a risk management perspective, you got to be able to see the problem, raise your hand and then bring solutions and fix it. Right. And kind of back to what Michael was just saying, weekly updates, right. From a schedule perspective or weekly, you know, our weekly meetings, not just, but not just OACs, right. Not just check the box meetings, actually meetings where we're sitting down and we're reviewing what are the risks of the project. Is it material? Is it labor? Right? Is it safety? Um, what are we seeing and, and approaching that subject on a weekly basis? Mm -hmm. And when leveraging software like Outbuild, has that risk strategy changed or been optimized in any way? Oh, I think it's going to be greatly optimized with the Roadblocks tool. Um, everybody I've shown is just head over head over heels for that. Um, to have that sync with Procore, I mean, I was literally just sitting down, rolling it out, uh, the schedule out to a team. And, you know, when I showed, hey, look, we can sync this to Procore and you can, you and if you don't want to sync it for everything, you can list like contractual issues. Like, what are we having problems? What are our road, road our, what are, are the roadblocks? And that echoes, I think what we were just talking about is like having that conversation weekly. We'll be able to see that roadblock. Okay, it's not cleared. Let's click on those and let's look at which ones are unresolved. Um so I think that's going to optimize our process um, and bring a lot of those issues to the forefront. Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds like you guys really already had those pieces in place with the board that's out there and your constraint log that's out there. Um, does that get used frequently too? Do you have trades people that go out there and they'll write stuff up there or? Yeah. And I, again, I back to kind of turning the Titanic around a little bit, right. Where we're really trying to drive engagement. I, you know, there's a lot of the subs out there um, just aren't used to it. So I think as we start using it more um, we will see that engagement. Um, but yeah, the, again, back to the, how this works, it just compartmentalizes all that, right. Where it shouldn't, it gets really hard to manage a project. And I'm sure you guys are, you have, have gone through this before as well, when you have a schedule software, then you have your, your meeting minutes over here and you have, out there, you have a whole constraints list. Then you have an Excel spreadsheet somebody else is working on. You have a procurement log over here. You have so many different where everything lives. And it's like, hey, how can we get it all in one spot? Now it's like everything's in Procore, 
right? Now we not only have that, we can sync everything to our schedule and have all that live there. Um, there's no need to have all these different documents living out there that that's how part, that's good, how good things get missed. So. Yeah. yeah. And definitely the, the visual management, we say five, five feet in five seconds. If you, if you can't understand what's on a big screen from five feet away in five seconds, it's not clean enough. There's not enough, you know, robustness and color and taking all that information and having a very clear indicator that shows when something is blocked or roadblocked in a color that says, this is your task. And this is when it's happening simplifies whether you're used on iPad or just paper, right? It, it just simplifies right. everything for you to, to have those conversations. Right. So. Awesome. And then Nate, I've got one last question for you. And uh, I'd love to know what it is specifically about Outbuild that you've liked versus other tools. And would you recommend us to any other owner, developer, builders? Yeah, I think uh, the list of what I like is pretty large. Um, but I do think overall just usability. Um, it's extremely easy to use and get in and understand. Um, uh, you know, one of the things with, again, P6 and, and Asta and those other ones, they're, they're, they're very good tools. Um, but what I have found is, you know, a lot of the project managers, we don't use schedule consultants for the most part. I like, I like managing the schedule on the project. What I have found is, you know, there's, those tools are so powerful um, and they're so powerful to where they could be a little challenging to learn and understand um, and get, get dialed in. Um, this has been extremely easy to hand off um, and easy to use from a functionality standpoint. So I think that is like, step one is it's just been great to be able to hand the, you know hand the keys over and have somebody be able to operate it and use it uh without creating a rat's nest to circular references or whatever else may be going on in there um that's been great awesome and yes 100 percent. i would uh i would absolutely tell everybody to use this for sure and I, what i tell everybody is like it's not perfect right There's, nothing's ever perfect um but it's very it's getting very very good it's very easy to use and you guys are johnny on the spot when you know, when there's something that isn't working, you guys are right there to fix it um, and take the feedback, which I think goes miles. Yep. Yep. Well, we're always excited to help out. And Nate, I know we've had several conversations. I, I love getting to talk shop with you and uh, I'm glad the tool is working for you very well. And then um, I'd love to do just one little bonus question here. And Mike, if you've got anything, feel free to throw it in. Uh, but any messages or advice you'd like to send out to, to other people out in the construction industry or, or owner builders? Yeah, get involved. Um, I, I would say the, you know, give it a shot. Um, you know, we're always looking to expand and, and, and try different processes, anything that's going to make us better. Right. So I would just say, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and, and figure out if, if this is right for you. And if it's not great, but, um, it's a very, very effective tool and, I think it's definitely worth a shot. Awesome. Thank you for those kind words, Nate. Um, anything else from you, Mike? Oh, that's that's great. I, I wish we had an outbuild shirt to put on Nate right now. <laughs> Soon all, the things, Soon all the things we believe as well. So we really appreciate your time, Nate. Thank you so much. Yep. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Nate. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.